Welcome to episode 74 of the Clarity Compressed podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly, and I will be your host today. And today we're going to talk about who showed up for work, the visionary or the arsonist. Clarity can only really exist in the light of truth. Branding just isn't a tactic. It's a lifestyle change. Now, before we get into the visionary or the arsonist, I'm going to introduce a new segment to the podcast. We had a little meeting and we're going to try to introduce more segments into the podcast, thinking that it'll be able to bring you a little bit more value, make things a little bit more shareable for you and a little bit more compact. The segment is called Moments of Clarity. This Moment of Clarity segment is going to be just a short truth, so a short uh, thought you know, less than like 30 seconds that you can kind of think about, deploy, and hopefully give you a little more clarity in your life. Today's moment of clarity is this. If you feel it, you own it. Meaning that no one else is responsible for how you feel. Only you can really be responsible for how you feel. So if you feel it, you own it. Your feelings are your responsibility. And if you take responsibility for your own feelings, you get control back and actually your relationships can move forward in a healthy way. Okay, that was our first moment of clarity segment. We'll see how it did. Okay, getting back to the main point today. Today, I wanna to talk about the visionary or the arsonist. So I read this book. I had, as you may know, I went on vacation a couple weeks ago and I did read, I read some biographies and a bunch of other stuff, but I did read one business book and it's this book called, oh, I don't know if that's going to get, it's too dark. You probably can't see it. It's a do scale by, a, um, I believe he's an Irish author named Les McEwen. I think that's how you pronounce it. It says a roadmap, a roadmap to growing a remarkable company. Um, and this book really talks about what needs to happen in an organization to scale and what pivots have to happen. You know, he talks about a lot of stuff that is really relevant to my career in business. And I wish I would have read this book, you know, 17 years ago instead of right now. But he talked about like when you make the pivot from startup to a business that's very scalable. And, you know, in this culture, we definitely aggrandize startups. There's this... Um, I don't know, it's just like an aura around startups and they're celebrating, they're magnifying, there's this sex appeal to it. But being a startup, frankly, the goal of any startup should be stop being a startup as soon as possible because in startup world, everything is nuts and there's not a lot of stability and there's a lot of pivoting and there aren't a lot of resources and a lot of uncertainty, um, a lot of just getting by uh, by the skin of your teeth. And so it does make sense that a healthy business can't operate in startup mode or really can't grow because of all those things. So the goal of a startup business should be to not be a startup. But what I want to talk about today is one principle in the book. And um, this one hit me right between the eyes. And it deals with the concept of visionary leaders. Now, it's easy to think of visionary leaders and, you know, that the big names start to just... Um, just stack up, right? We got Jobs and we got Bezos and we got Musk and all these guys that like, oh, these guys are visionary leaders. But I'm going to push all of them aside for a second because I think a lot of you watching, listening to the podcast, a lot of people in general could be char characterized as a visionary leader. And I'm going to talk about a visionary leader, someone who sees opportunity and is willing to go get it and willing to bring other people along and try to rally other people along to go get it. So in my mind and from my definition, that's what I'm calling a visionary leader today. I think a lot of times you wouldn't see yourself as a visionary leader, you know, because um, I don't know, sometimes it's just your humility or, you know, you don't want to really put yourself in, in that bucket because you don't see yourself as that. But today you get to be in that bucket. So if you're leading a team, if you pursue opportunity, or even if you're leading a family, right, and you want the best for you, can be a visionary leader. So in the book, he talks about visionary leaders and he says, they have an alter ego. And the visionary leader is the person that really is able to see the opportunity. They're able to, you know, make sense of the marketplace or understand what it is that needs to happen in an organization so it can grow, so it can accomplish its mission in a better way. And then they're ready and willing to pivot to get it, align resources. They're able to communicate the vision to a team and the team is willing to follow and they, they can kind of um, solicit this motivation and energy. And that's how great companies move forward behind these visionary leaders. However, there's a dark side 
and an alter ego to the visionary leader and that dark side uh, the author of the book calls the arsonist. And let me explain the difference. So like the arsonist, he, as you can probably guess by the word, likes to set things on fire. Oh, we're not doing that anymore. Boom. Gone. Let's pivot. Gone. And the hard part about this is that a lot of the behaviors between the visionary leader and the arsonist actually look very similar at the outset, but the result is so different because the underlying reason for it is so different. So I want to talk about a couple things that I took away from this, and I think you will also take away because even if you're not in this category of visionary leader, I guarantee you that you do currently or have or will work for one, follow one, or have to deal with one in your life at some point or another. So understanding these truths, I think can really be helpful in the macro sense to help us understand our organizations and whether that's if we're in front of the organization or if we're a part of the team that's supporting the organization. And I think that's helpful. So let's start with the good parts. Visionary leaders, the good parts, right? They pivot quickly. Like I said, um, they can bring excitement, an ability to take on new challenges, really bring out the most in new opportunities that can make huge progress in changing business and culture and life and relationships. Let's talk about the arsonist. So who's in the building today, the visionary or the arsonist? Let's talk about the arsonist for a second. Now, the arsonist makes decisions like pivoting or changing programs. Well, because the feeling, maybe they feel constrained or like something's not going so smoothly and they get just bogged down in the minutia of trying to make progress. You know, the old uh, adage, I don't know if it's songwriting or writing in general or maybe creativity, right? It's 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. That's true in business as well. And that principle ties in with this visionary leader versus the arsonist, the inspiration comes, but then the perspiration comes and the visionary leader may get bored or distracted. And that just kind of comes with the territory. It's not saying it's right or wrong. It comes with the territory. And when the arsonist pivots versus when the visionary pivots towards something good, the arsonist pivots away from something, maybe good, and that constant pivoting and constant changing, you know what it is if you've ever worked for one. Man, it wears you down and it wears you out. And I realized reading this, I'm like, oh my gosh. Like I look back past my, my 17 years in business and like, I guess it can be arguable to say like, oh, because I'm a visionary leader, I led that company to growth over a long period of time to success, to acquisition. People had more opportunity, right? You can make that argument. But then as I really start to think through, I'm like, man, half, and maybe that's generous, but half of the pivots I made and half of the changes I made were probably the arsonist and not the visionary leader that was also willing to do the mundane minutia work to build a strong, stable foundation for the company. So the blessings, we talked about them. The curses, we talked about them. So the question really comes up is like, well, how do we fix it? How do you get the good parts of the visionary leader without the bad parts of the arsonist? And, you know, the fix is kind of simple. You know, it's not a fix, but it's how you get the fix. Self-awareness, and I say that a lot, and you hear it a lot out there, but it's really just one thing. It's being self-aware enough to ask yourself the question when you're ready to make a pivot or ready to make a change or feeling the itch. You can ask yourself the question like, who showed up today? Who's making the call? Is it the visionary leader or is it the arsonist? Who's at the control board right now? That is it for episode 74. Um, I hope you took something away from it. Hope you liked the little bit new format, uh, the moment of clarity. We're going to try to explore that. Let me know what you thought, by the way. Um, thank you to all of you who share the podcast and listen every month. Uh, have a lot of interesting things coming up. One, our next event, ClarityCon 2. I don't want to talk too much about it yet, but it is significantly in the works. We're looking at fall. Also, uh, dropping content, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter. Please join the conversation there. Again, if there's anything I can do to help you, that is my goal. I want to connect with you in that way and then do whatever I can to bring you value, which is something that you can deploy in your life um, that moves you forward and makes you a little better. So thank you to the Clarity Compress podcast audience. I hope you have a fantastic, fantastic day, a fantastic week, and I look forward to seeing you soon. <music>